78 Sports TV here with a very special guest. We have with us today uh, schoolboy, Mr. Richard Garcia. How you doing today, sir? I'm doing real good. How y'all doing? Uh, excellent, excellent. Uh, Mr. Garcia, for those who don't know, would you mind giving us a brief history of uh, who you are and um, how long have you been into these dogs? Okay, uh, you know, like I said, my name is Richard Garcia. Uh, Schoolboy is a, is a name I borrowed from uh, an ex featherweight and lightweight boxing champion. I'm a, uh, I used to be a real big boxing fan. And his name was Bobby Chacon, and it was Bobby Schoolboy Chacon. That's where I borrowed the name. He, he was a, one of my favorite fighters. And, uh, you know, I liked, his, I liked his style. I liked his tenacity. He was young. You know, they called him Schoolboy because he was in high school when he turned professional. And I was, I was still a kid when I first got into the dogs. I was 18 years old. And, uh, you know, I actually live, still live in the town that I was born. And this, this is where I got my start. And I've been in almost... 40 years since 1978. That's why I started getting my first dogs. And, uh, you know, like, like most people, I didn't really have a mentor, you know, and, and uh, so I just kind of did it on my own, got all the books I could read, you know. I, I kind of went from, from boxing, you know, my family also, you know, uh, we're, we're Latino, so, you know, we have a history with cockfighting fighting and all that. Right. And, uh, you know, I wasn't too much into chickens and all that. And I like horse racing, but horse racing expensive. So when I heard about pit bulls, I was going, you know, that's the, that's the thing for me. Because we had dogs growing up uh, my whole life. You know, uh, my dad was a manager of a, for a big uh, company. I live in an agriculture community. And uh, he, uh, we had cattle when we were young. And we used to have uh, dogs work the cattle, you know. So I kind of grew up, you know, having dogs that... that that do something, you know, they need to do work or sport or whatever. So the pit bull was a dog for me. And, uh, you know, it started like that. I got dogs from here and there. I had, you know, Heinzel dogs and Bolio dogs and Bully Sun dogs in the beginning. And, you know, what, what, uh, once I got Ronald Boyle's dogs, uh, you know, that kind of, that kind of set the standard for, for my future family of dogs. Uh, I got several from him. I did good with them. And then uh, I met uh, Dunlavey, the guy who bred Big Red, and uh, just went from there, you know. And at some point, at one point, he had to get out of the dogs because uh, his father passed away, and he didn't. His father was the one that took care of the dogs because he worked a lot, so he really couldn't keep dogs. So he just gave his whole yard to three or four people, three of us or four of us, you know, that, that were friends of his, and. And that's uh, that's kind of what, where my family of dogs started. Okay, okay. Um, what was your favorite dog, and why? Well, uh, my favorite dog of my family of dogs was was Mr. Rowdy. He was a pick of the litter. He was sired by Big Red out of uh, Sissy. Sissy was a father and daughter bred off a of Jeep. She was right off a of Jeep and a daughter of Jeep. And uh, again, you know, in boxing, I like the feisty fighters. You know, aggressive but not you know, but with smarts too, you know, and, and, uh, that's kind of how I, I thought of my dogs, you know, kind of fighters like that. Those are the types that I preferred. And, uh, he was just real feisty, full of energy, ball of fire, you know, a lot, a lot of attitude, a lot of, a lot of real good with people. You know, my, my wife bottle fed him when he was young. She didn't like, you know, the way he was looking, so she just took him into the bedroom and treated him like a human baby almost, you know. Right. You know even though he's a dog, you know, she just kind of, kind of, she bottle fed him, you know, with Queen him and all that, and he just kind of grew up around us, and he was probably my my favorite dog. You know, Big Red was probably my best dog, but Mr. Rowdy, since I bred him, he was one of the, the first for my family of dogs, you know, and I liked, liked his behavior, temperament, and his style, attitude, everything, you know. Okay. Uh, he was, uh, uh, can we talk about records, stuff like that? Oh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, whatever you want to talk about, okay. I'm, I'm here. Okay. He was a, he was a two-time winner and a, and a one-time real game loser. Uh, he won in hour 28 his first time against the Eli Bread Dog. And then uh, in California, there was a bloodline called the White Dogs. Uh, they're, they're basically Bullet, Cotton's Bullet, and Ed Crenshaw Bread, and, uh, and then later on, they added some Heinzel to it. But they're basically, basically the, the beginning of them was Cotton's Bullet and, and uh, Ed Crenshaw. 
And uh, his second win was against uh, a best in show winner named Wino, and he was uh, a white bread dog. <laughs> and uh, Mr. Roger won that one in 46 minutes. And then, uh, you know, I did, I did his first one at, at 37 and the second one at 37 and a half. And then uh, I bucked him all the way up to 39 into a two-time winner named uh, Clorox. So both of them were going for their championship. And it was a real good, it was a real good show, man. It was nip and tuck for over two hours. Uh, Mr. Roddy got the, all the flesh from his bottom jaw taken away, two, two front broken legs, and he still scratched. And I picked him up. That one went two hours and 31 minutes. Whoa. So he not only proved that he was a good dog, but he was also a game dog. And uh, he produced some good dogs, too. He was a good producer. Most of the... Most of the stuff I bred, you know, the ones that I, that I kept, they, they, they were good producers also. The blood was real consistent. You know, I got good percentages out of it. Okay. What, what would you say um, was the best bloodlines that you like to work with uh, in your day, and what do you think are some of the best bloodlines that you heard of today? I think, I think uh, you know, back then some of the, some of the best ones were the, were the Bolio dogs. In fact, when I got Boyle's dogs, and this is kind of what I based my standards for my family of dogs on, was a little dog named Ronnie. I won one time with him in 40 minutes, and then I lost to Grand Champ, Smith and Walton's Grand Champion Badger. And he was a dead game dog. You know, he was, and that's, that's kind of where I, real, 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 uh, real athletic, you know. And I was young and green at the time. I didn't really know what I was doing. And, and uh, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't in the best shape. He wasn't fed the best but you know I, I was on that learning curve where, where you know it was trial and error and, and uh, you know Ronnie Ronnie paid for my mistakes but he was a real big dog and that's what I based my family of dogs on at that time the Boyle's dogs were, were more had more bull heel in them than he had it, more bully son Eli Jr. later but uh, the bull heel dogs were real popular Heinzel dogs uh, Sorrel's dogs and then the white dogs, they were an old bloodline. They were they began in the in the late sixties, early seventies. Uh in my area the, the Freddie Jones stuff, which was old Ed Crenshaw and a little bit of Dibo blood in it. Right. You know, in, in in my area those were the ones. Today, you know, and then and then the at the same time the 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 Jeep Red Boy dogs, you know, Jeep became popular and the Jeep with the Red Boy and then later on, Jeep Red Boy and, and Eli. You know, and I think today, you know, I'm not, I'm not too much up on it because I don't have any dogs anymore. Right. And I try and keep, I try and keep, uh, you know, up to par. But, but you know, the Eli bloodline is is has been popular for many years. It still is. It's it's uh, you know, it's real popular all over the world. The the Mayday dogs. You know, are popular. Uh, Jeep Red Boy still is, and then the, the Red Boy Jocko stuff was also real consistent. Uh, you know, when, when it first started, and I think it still is today. Right, right. Um, I also want to ask you about, um, you know, a lot of the, the a lot of dog men. There's a, a lot of rumors and uh, stories. I know you've heard them all um, about fake pedigrees being put on dogs, legendary dogs like Eli. Um, I think Don Mayfield was uh, once told a story that uh, Eli didn't have the pedigree uh, that Boldrew put on him. Um, do you know anything about that, or is that just you know gossip? Well, well, I'll say this: the the you know no, nothing changes. You know, every everything that's being said and that goes across the board for for pit bulls, good and bad. Pedigrees, paper hanging, conditioning, feed, you know, even even the involvement of, of different entities like the SPCA and people like that. You know, they didn't have so much of that back in the day, but that's always been a part of the pit bull. It's always been real popular and, and not so much publicly way back in the day, but it's always been real popular and it's always been, you know, uh, uh, attacked also. You know, it's always had, had a bad rap. You know, you can go back to as far as the 1800s and there's articles written about them about, you know, uh, certain people going to see fights and they just, they don't like it. They think it's cruel and all that. They just don't understand the, the breed itself. 
and it's just their personal point of view from their opinion, you know, and, and, uh, but, uh, as far as Eli goes, you know, I've heard those same stories. I don't know the truth. You know, I've, I've read and heard the same ones, you know, as, as, uh, as everyone else, you know, he, he was a black dog and that's where sometimes people get, get, uh, they don't understand, you know, how could a black dog come from, from reds and brindles and buckskins and stuff like that, you know, but in, in his pedigree, there's black dogs in there right. and, 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 and that color, if it's in the background, since black is such a dominant color, it can come out almost at any time. You know? And once it's there, because it's a dominant color, again, it, it's going to stay there, you know, so right. if, and if, as the breedings were made, they keep making breedings off the Eli stuff. Uh, it, it'll revert back to the other colors that are in there too. Now, now people, you know, after after afterwards, people were saying, you know, well, how are you getting red dogs out of black dogs? You know, Eli dogs and stuff like that. Well, that that's in there more than the black is. It's just that black is such a dominant color. But honestly, you know, I don't know the truth. I talked to, uh, you know, I visited. Mayfield way back in 1983, you know, and he brought it up uh, to us too. You know, he talked about it, and that was, that was just his belief. And and you know, he was closer to the source. You know, he was from Texas. Uh, uh, Bruce from Louisiana. You know, and and they're they're uh, right next to each other, and and from northern Louisiana, so it's closer to Texas. So he was he was in that circle, and he was you know more more. Uh, uh, he would know more about it than me, and that's where he got his opinion from. You know, talking to you know uh, other people there, and 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 knowing what he knew, and and being around the dogs. You know, he based it on all the information that he got. You know, for himself at the time. So that's where that comes from. Okay, you know? what uh, what do you think, um, in in your opinion, or from what you've heard, what do you think the best strain of Eli is right now, or ever was? Well, my, my favorite, the, the Eli, Eli, uh, the, you know, there's there's Eli, which is basically Boudreaux blood or and Clemens blood. Uh, you know, those, those are the ones that that, that that started the Eli bloodline. But from that bloodline, there's there's two distinct ones, which is Bully Son and Eli Junior. Right. And, and and they are they they went you know they went their own way. They bred certain ways except for Bully Son and Eli Jr. both bringing bread to Long's Tuffy they were bred to different females and there might be a couple more but they were bred different ways and that's why the dogs the bloodlines themselves Bully Son and Eli Jr. they look different but if you're speaking straight Eli I, I would consider Boudreaux the, the best Eli blood you know the, the T-Bud and the Skull and Reno and Badger and dogs like that but if you're talking about because in my day, it wasn't called Eli blood. You either had Bully Son or you had Eli Jr. Right. And, and uh, you know, the Eli Jr. stuff is like Grand Champion Art and, and uh, uh, you know, stuff like that. Back in my day, you know, uh, sons and daughters are off of Art. And, and Hurt, you know, was his brother. Champion Hurt was his brother. And then the uh, Don Divine had some of that blood, and then there's the Bully Sun blood, which I like the bull. I prefer the Bully Sun blood myself. I like the Midnight Cowboy stuff, which is Bully Sun bred to, to uh, uh, Long's baby. Long's baby and Long's Duffy were sisters, so they bred Bully Sun to both of them. And and uh, Long's Duffy stuff is what threw Stomper and Blue or Buck. They call them sometimes Champion Spade and uh, Bully Sun to. To uh, Long's Baby is what through the Midnight Cowboy stuff and Shivo stuff, and I like that stuff myself because they're they're all the strains produce hard biters, but for me the the Stomper and the Midnight Cowboy stuff they, they produce the more gamer lines of of uh, of the Bully Sun blood. Okay, you know? okay. Um, what do you think of? I know you mentioned it earlier, but what do you think of the the Mayday uh, Mayday as a dog as a producer? Um, um, you know, I, I keep hearing just phenomenal things about um, that bloodline. What do you think of it? Well, the, the, there's, there's, you know, like always, there's, you have people that are detractors and people that are supporters. And the thing with Mayday, and, and you could say this with Jeep, and you could say it with Bully Sun, is, is they were bred a lot. But the difference between 
a dog like Mayday, he is, although he was bred a lot, he produced a lot of good dogs too. He himself was a good dog. And back in his pedigree, you know, he's, he's, he's got uh, uh, Red Roy jo and Jocko, if I'm not mistaken, you know, but way yeah. back in his, in his pedigree, he comes from some old Bolio, Carver, and Eli Jr. stuff. And it's good blood, it's real solid blood, it's old blood, and I'm sure it played a part in, in his, uh, his ability and his ability to produce, too. You know, he comes from bloodlines that, that, that are, that are uh, consistent. You know, he was a big dog, and, you know, he gets a lot of rap for, 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 you know, different things. He was big, so he didn't have no competition. That's not true. You know, he fought good competition. Uh, you know, he was bred a lot, like I just mentioned, but he also threw a lot of good dogs, you know. Right. I think it's consistent. You know, I think there's a lot of it out there that, that ain't good, but it's because of the who has them. You know, not so not so much the blood. And it always, whenever you're breeding dog, it, it, it matters who has them and what they do with them, rather than the particular bloodline, because all of them have good and bad in them. Just some of them have more good, some of them have more bad. But it's usually uh, two things: either they're not very good producers, or the people that have them don't do right by them. Right. But with Mayday, the Mayday blood, you know, uh, uh, there's there's good stuff out there. You know, uh, I refereed uh, a convention years and years ago, and it was uh, 16 matches, and I refereed eight of them, and eight of them were, were Mayday dogs. And they were good, solid dogs. They, they were in shape. You know, they were consistent. They weren't bone crushers, the ones I saw, and I'm sure there's some that are, but but they were steady, you know. Right. And they had good air, and uh, they were well-prepared, you know. Okay. So that, that's about, that's about my... my uh, experience with the with the May Day. It's not much but, but you know, when you see good stuff it's it's relative, you know. Good is good and bad is bad, you know. Right, right. What do, what do you what do you think of um uh the boomerang blood that's still out here? Uh how was what do you know about boomerang um from your time and, and uh what have you heard about it the blood that's still out there today? Yeah, the, today I'm again I'm not I'm not real familiar with it. The 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 last Boomerang stuff, really, that I was familiar with was, was the, you know, the ones Boyles had, Miss uh, Grand Champion Queen Hearts and her brother Spanky and T-Boy and and, uh, and Mavis. You know, they were crossed with the Bolillo. But the Boomerang, are, are, in my time, were, were well known for being very athletic, very intense, strong, fast, good mouths. You know, they, they, it, it produced well with the Grand Champion Hank Blood. And it produced well with the Bolio blood and the Jeep blood. You know, it was real consistent. And it comes from old dogs, you know, whether whether it's pistol or iron head or, you know, whatever whatever uh, it's supposed to be and whatever it is, it's good carver blood. And and uh, they had they in my time they had their run just like everyone else. Rick Soils, uh, you know, made a whole family of dogs. I. I uh, I refereed one that was, that was half his blood and half Eli, and it was, he was a very good dog. I forget his name now. It was either Whitey or something like that, but but just consistent. You know, it crossed good with the Bolio stuff, like I said, and the Bolio stuff. And, and the one thing that always stuck out of my mind from them was they were very good athletes, very athletic, you know. Okay. Um, can you tell us uh, about, I understand you have a, uh, <clears throat> uh, you're a part of a dog registry now? Yes, it's uh, called the ICDR, uh, International Coalition Dog Registry, and we only register purebred pit bulls, and uh, we're just starting out. I just had a show last weekend, you know, a confirmation show right. last weekend with a good turnout. Everybody had, had a good time, and, and uh, one of the things that I do that, that I started years ago, and I've been all over the U.S. and, and Mexico and, and, you know, even Panama, and... Uh, uh, is I do seminars, uh, you know, at the shows that I attend. Those go over real well, you know. But uh, we're, we're a fledgling registry. We're starting out. We're getting a lot of support weekly, if not uh, almost daily, you know. And and uh, the people that are involved are, are uh, real dog men, you could say, you know, retired. And, and uh, we just love to breed. You know, and it's not to knock any other organization because I've worked with a lot of them. 
and I'm still friends with the with people that are in different organizations. You know, I try and get along with everybody, and the people that are my friends are my friends, regardless of who they, their uh, what organization they're loyal to. You know, we help each other, and uh, it was just it was just something that I wanted to do. You know, for the breed to help preserve it, to help uh, keep the uh, the standard for pit bull as close to the original as we can. You know, dog fights are legal. You can't do that, but we have legal sports, and it gives. It's something that, that to keep the athleticism in, in the breed, you know, rather than just have them just for show or breed them to a, a you know to a standard of how they look, you know, the, the people most of the people that are involved, they do something with their dogs, you know, and and uh, and the standard for athleticism is still there, you know, whether they they hunt with them or whether they they you know hog hunt with them or, or whether they involved in the weight pulling or the you know, the vertical jump or, or the treadmill race or tug of war. Yeah. You know, uh, I grew up, you know, if you're going to have dogs, they should earn their keep, you know, do something, work or sports or something, you know. Right. That's kind of the attitude that we have with the registry, you know. Get out there and work your dogs, you know, and uh, register them and we'll keep the history of the breed intact and, and for the future. Okay, can you tell everybody, um, if you know off the top of your head, uh, any of the the, the fees associated, how people can um, contact that registry? Right. All, all the registration information and, and forms to fill out are on uh, registry at icbrusa.com. And uh, a single registration is $20 plus shipping, like $25. Uh, a four generation is $45, uh, seven generation pedigree is $75, and then we also register, uh, you know, litters, it's $10 a pup for litters, and uh, we have kennel registrations, those are, uh, I think it's $50 or 45 bucks, uh, and uh, uh, we have a four, four generation pedigree, uh, I think it's $45, and then the kennel registration is 50 bucks, I think that's the rundown on it. But it's uh, uh, all the information available is is uh, at registry at icdrusa.com. Okay, and, so uh, we have a website now too. Same same. If you look look it up, and that's that's the website also. Okay, I'll put a link to that in the description box of this video. Uh, once again, Mr. Garcia, I want to thank you so much for your time. Um, and uh, hopefully in the future, I can give you a call back if we have any more questions or any more hot topics come up. Uh, thanks again for your time, sir. You're welcome. Call me anytime. I'm here to help, and uh, I wish you the best. Great success. Thank you. Uh, thank you.